Breathe upon us, Spirit of God. Touch every aspect of our life with your word. Let it angelic kind of become upon us this morning. Let your very atmosphere tabernacle upon us. Please breathe your word to us this morning. Breathe your life to us. Move the way you want. You have our full permission, Holy Spirit. Let your presence be tangibly felt. And let your impact be undeniable in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen. What will I be remembered for? If I leave the earth, will I be opportune enough to write my names in gold in the sands of time? Will I make an impact that the whole world will still sing my name even at my departure? What will be the testimony at your, of your death? By the time you are being kept into the grave, will that be the totality of you? And so what we can remember you for is the day you died. So that day we remembered, wow, he died on so, so, so date. Look at your life critically and begin to ask yourself those questions. Hebrews chapter 11, 32 to 33, quickly. I need sound. Should I tell you what to play? Yeah, I cry. Sing it for me. He said, and what shall I more say? For the time would not, would not allow me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Simon and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophet Nesbas, who through faith subdued kingdoms, quenched the mouth of lions, Quench the fairy furnace who through faith subdued kingdom. A man's life is supposed to be introduced by one, the things he created and the impact he made. Even God was introduced like that in scriptures. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 said, And God created the heavens and the earth. He was not introduced by saying, you have to believe there is a God. No, he didn't force himself on the people. They could feel the impact and accept him. If he had to make men accept his person, then he's not qualified to be called God. That's why even in the garden, <coughs> he had to intentionally leave one of the tree and told man, not to touch that tree now listen not because man will not one day have a need to partake of that tree how do i know hebrews chapter 5 14 to 16. he said but those who are matured are those who have what dined with solid food and have exercised their senses to be able to discern between good and evil and what tree did they partake of then the tree of good and evil so it was in the sea man will not one day need to partake of that reality but man wanted to short circuit the process so he kept such a tree in the garden because if he tells man you can eat everything he's not qualified to be god the only reason why you can be called a deity is that people make a choice to follow you so he had to keep something there that they will make the decision themselves to either choose to obey his instruction or disobey else he is not qualified to be called God your introduction should be based on what the things you created the things you betted upon the atrium and the impact you made that's what we talk about when we speak about the triumphant generation we are talking about men who have fulfilled divine mandates but upon the earth why still becoming heavenly relevant because we have men making waves on this earth but they are not yet saved that's useless you can make all the money on the earth and you are still a fool do you know there's a rich man in the bible the bible calls rich fool do you know that so wealth is not a sign of wisdom so we are talking about people number one 
who have fulfilled their mandates the reason why they were being born hebrews 10 verse 7 jesus speaking there is the law i come in the volume of books that we are written concerning me to fulfill them so how can we say what does it mean to triumph it simply means to emerge victorious it simply means to be confirmed as the victor in a conquest against a rival or against an obstacle simple so who is God going to look at and say wow this man has triumphed over the systems of this world he has not been consumed by the systems of cosmos I said number one a man that is still relevant to God's agenda number two a man that is in the center of fulfilling and accomplishing his what his purpose or mission on earth such that like paul who spoke in second timothy 4 verse 7 give me that scripture he said i have fought a good fight i have finished my course so it means before every man there is a syllabus mine might be different from yours so run your own course that's why a man that competes has lost sense of mission he didn't know what they sent him the Bible speaking in 1 Corinthians 10, I think 11, 13. It says, they that compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. It will be simply based on what we are asked to do. Not on what men rated. Do you understand that? So that's what we call the triumphant generation. Because the Bible says, in the, in the latter days, perilous times shall abound. Men shall be lovers of them, their own self. They shall give themselves to ungodliness. Live life that look like this world will never come to an end. You have so that's why they call it a commission. Behind the conception, there is what a commission. So it means a co-mission. Somebody had an agenda, and because he can't be there in person, he called this young man and commissioned him. Mean join me in this mission. And fulfill that mandate on earth that's the kind of people god is calling for so as we celebrate this time and this season we need to remind ourselves very well of this reality how will you look at me on the last day and say well done good and faithful servant some of us are busy doing things god never sent us you are reading courses that are not they are not registered in heaven you are in units and departments in your, in, your, in your church, in your fellowship, where you are offering strange fire. He never kept you there. The Bible says, and Ophni and Phineas went to offer sacrifice like their father. And to God, it was struck fire. It struck them there. He will always hear your voice from the vantage point of where he kept you. That's why when he came to the garden in Genesis, the Bible says, he called out to man, Adam, where are you? He knew where they always meet. He come now, you are in protocol. So, but I didn't know you are there. I never kept you. Are we following? So alignment is not necessarily based on choice. It's not even based on what, what we feel or how, looks, how goodly it looks like. It's based on what? Instruction. That's why I tell people obedience is the highest form of offering. The Bible says to obey is better than what? Sacrifice obedience is the highest form of offering so very quickly what are the characteristics of this kind of people that we can look at and say they are among the triumphant what generation look 18 verse 8 jesus one time he was talking he gave a parable verse 1 he said to this end he made a parable that men ought always to pray and not to turn to cowards then he began to talk about a woman that was a widow and had in that city an unrighteous judge and how she kept pestering this um, unrighteous just day and night for her desires. And the Bible said, though she be in, though he be what unrighteous, he will grant her a petition. But it is my emphasis. Look at what Jesus said. He said, "How be it? When I come back, will I still find faith on the earth? Will I still find men that have not been defeated by life? Men who will say, I, I choose to bend the rules. I, I choose to bend the rules." That's what we mean when we say you are triumphing. You have not been defeated by earthly systems. Why? <laughs> the 
the Nebuchadnezzars of our days are making the fire seven times hotter. They kept you at home one year and still tell you to have 26 years of age to get a job with 10 years working experience. <laughs> and then your uncle looked at you and said, this job will come. But can you change your date of birth? And then you remember when you were in the service singing, I will not let you go. And you are just about to leave him. He said, will I still find this kind of man? That's the kind of people we are talking about. That have not been defeated by life. That has not been carried away by the end time spirits and the spirit of this age. If you marry the spirit of this time, you will soon become a widow. It won't last. I have had young men who don't believe anything about scriptures again. They don't believe anything about God. You go to every group you see is money. Finance. Powerful and good. You know what I keep telling them? Our fathers never thought it that way. And they became successful. How are we changing the protocol? Say, leave God, leave God. And just face this money. Really? You can be a rich fool. You can be a rich fool. They followed this God faithfully, trusted in Him, and He never let them to bear. The Bible says, "Is David?" He said, "Since I was born, and now it seems like I am getting old. I have never, not for once, seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seeds beg for bread." Why? Psalm twenty-two, verse thirty. He said, "Even a seed shall serve him. One, it will be counted for a generation." How can my children suffer when I laid this kind of sacrifice for them? How? There is a deceptive system upon the Ephraim. Turning the hearts of men away from reality and from God. I've seen many people chasing shadows. The question you will be asked in heaven is not what course of study you study do. <laughs> it's the assignment they ask you to come and do. The days we are growing up, the way we grew up, all that was ringing on our head was make sure you don't miss purpose. Make sure you don't miss your assignment. That's why no matter the first class, the scholarships, the jobs, it rang on my head. May I not wait till 30 years to discover that I was doing the wrong thing all the while. That was my prayer. Not because I was struggled. I had everything in place for me. But I kept praying. I don't want to lose your way. That's how we grew. Now, purpose, no. There's nothing like that. So it looks like you gave back to yourself yourself and chose for yourself what you must study. The systems of this world. The systems of this world. If I come, will I still find faith on the earth? Will I still find men that are still recognized by heaven? men that are still fulfilling the reason to which god gave them birth if i come will i still find this kind of people or they will have been swallowed by the systems of this world you must be careful you must be careful in the days we are lift up your hands and pray prayer say lord open my eyes open my eyes I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy words to me. Listen, listen. One time, I went to see a senior friend, and I was talking to him. We just started the ministry there, and he said to me, He said, Stand, let me be sincere with you. God called me. In fact, he had some terrible kind of experiences to the core, which I didn't even have. And asked him to start a walk. He said, but when I looked at it, where will I start from? I said, oh boy, I left that thing. I went and looked for a job. There are many like that on the earth. They've been defeated. Why? The same. What will people say if they hear it? What will people say? You know what they called me? You know the names I've born? Do you know the kind of things I sacrificed? 
What will people say? When your friends will look at you and say you are behaving like a fool. You are in the midst of opportunities. And you kiss it goodbye. Last year alone, I got to scholarship for my PhD to the US. Already planned, I'm going to go. Because I planned, wanted to even actually leave you guys. And God said to me, He said, son, did you realize that you didn't run church for one year? Where are you going to? Give it up again. Stay with them one more year. And I kissed it goodbye. And so I was talking to some of my children, showing them. I said, who, who in this time can God trust like this? Who can we trust? I know some of you are saying, Papa, Kai, you try. It should not be me in Jesus' name. But that's what we are talking about. That's what I came to saw in the inside of you. That you go back to the reason of your existence. What will you say at the end of your departure? What? So quickly, what's the characteristics of the triumphant generation? Number one. What is their characteristics? Men that will triumph both in this life and in the life to come. What are their characteristics? Number one. A people of prayer. A people of prayer. Isaiah 66 verse 8 He said who have heard of such a thing Can a nation be born at once But as soon as Zion travel She shall give birth Galatians 4 19 Paul said I pray for you I travel in pains Till Christ is formed in you It takes travel to form Christ in a man That's why the Bible says If you fail in the days of adversity Your strength is small with all your tongues, with all your Bible, all your department, you have changed your date of birth now. You are doing things that you know to your face is totally anti-scriptures. And you still speak some few tongues. What happened? You have been defeated by this system. This evil system who makes merchandise with men. And they say if you betray your faith, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. Matthew 21 verse 12, 14. Bible says, and Jesus said when he came, went to the temple, saw them buying and selling there. He drove them and he said to them, my house shall be called a house of what? Prayer. So it takes a prayerful man to become a house that carries God. Do you understand what I said? It takes a prayerful man to become a house that can contain God. you found that those days when you just gave your life to Christ decisions you can stand and take very quickly now you are in between two opinions you are, you are confused should I do it should I not that you could even think of such your strength is small give yourself to prayer if you will survive these times if you will become relevant to God's kingdom and agenda give yourself to prayer how men form God in their inside through prayer number one we maintain communication and relationship through prayer we maintain communication and relationship through prayer number two we build ourselves up to 20 it's about building up yourself rise like an edifice by praying in the Holy Ghost through prayer we build ourselves up Through prayer, we superimpose the supernatural upon the natural. We get God to act through prayer. Those are the three basics of prayer. We look at natural situations that we can call upon the name of God upon, upon those situations and see them change for the better. Through prayer. Why will you make up your mind to sleep with the lecturer? A man that just have the power of a biro to write an A, a B, a C, a D, an E, and an F. Many have been defeated. Many. Why? 
because one of these lost heart somebody you can take his name to the inner chamber and call upon his name before your God and see who has the power but we don't think like that again he just will cry and say let me just do it let me just do it let me just do it why we've been defeated already develop stamina in the place of prayer develop that communion that communication link with God such that you can talk to him on any situation and on any matter even in the fulfillment of Jesus' destiny he came to a point Luke 22 verse 42 48 he came to a point where the burden was too heavy for him he said okay fine the next principle is that when the burden is too much for you you get others to join you he picked three men Peter, James and John he said come help me pray they slept and he went to God and told him the reality he said if possible let this cup. Some of you used to lie. You have lying spirit. You come to church. They say, "Tell God your problem and your burden." You see other people crying and praying. Say, "Sim tek te kondele onkusus atanta elatush kelede." Really? Tell him the way it is, the way you feel it. Sometimes I tell him, Father, I feel like breaking out. If you don't help me, I'm finished. Tell him the way you feel don't form a posture before God if you need to cry cry if you need to scream scream it's your father you are not a bastard develop stamina you're looking for a job and somebody saying you have to do this you have to do that can't you pray can't you talk to God you didn't see the way the apostles lived their lives even when they were threatened not to preach in his name the Bible said they went to the upper room Held your hands together and spread, oh God, behold their threats. Grant unto your servant boldness that we may speak forth your word by stretching forth your hands to you. And that signs and wonders be done through the name of your only son Jesus. They prayed. Such that the Bible said they developed it as a as a culture. They had what we call hours of prayer. At the tenth hour, at the third hour, they were praying. In Acts chapter 10, it was so funny that Peter prayed to a point he was hungry. It's normal. You pray begin to feel hunger not spiritual hunger physical hunger and he stopped his prayer and told them that they should cook food call a man stay alive we pray so they should cook food while he continues in the vision now he started seeing food so there is nothing abnormal about that pray if the prayer will not give you what you're asking for the worst it will do it will change you it won't leave you the same develop that stamina develop that strength this is the secret this is how we survive this is how when we see things that are not palatable things that are not sweet to our system sweet, that are not in alignment to what god has planned for us we get in there and settle them all our knees else you will bow to babylon good it just takes a question of time like they will keep saying every man can bow you just need to know his price how expensive are you man you just need to know his price <laughs> don't get to a point you do things that you cannot believe yourself with all your tongues because you have neglected this discipline the bible says and they kept giving themselves to the apostles doctrine the fellowshiping of bread the studying of the word and to prayers it is a ministry to prayers make it a life what kind of lazy generation are we raising Lazy generation. Anything, somebody is threatening you. If God doesn't do this thing, I will leave church. He will not miss you. He will not miss you. As you are shouting and angry with him on your TV, just two Christian channels enough. You see a woman shouting there. He's, he's God forever. I will serve him all the days of my life. They are just minus one. Rise up to your feet. Let's pray this prayer. Lord, the fire for prayers. For the hands of somebody. Told us it's more than a meeting, it's an encounter. We came to awaken reality in the inside of us that also nations and even the heavens can celebrate at our death and be happy we lived. Be happy that we passed through the sands of time. Pray this one. Can you pray a prayer for me? Say, Lord, put an oil in my life that can change my world. Put 
put your oil and fire upon my life raise your voice and pray that can transform my generation Raise your voice and pray. She dug a barrasca pen, the livro de Gabeta Gabella get a bashka parata talagada. Rakapa parasca pen, the lid of Reta Gabeta, Reta Gabeta, Reta Gabeta, Reta Gabeta, to revive this attitude of men that will triumph else you will be beaten down by life you will be beaten down by life you will get to a point you will make statements to God you will not believe yourself you get to that height because the strength inside is small number two are people that have conformed to the measure of Christ are people of spiritual maturity a people of spiritual maturity we have so much of babies in the body of Christ men and women that have chosen not to grow up in God Luke 2 52 said under Christ Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature he increased in stature in stature spiritual strength stature and then he found favor before God and before men Philippians 3 verse 10 he said that I may know him and the power of his restoration to be made conformable to the death and the fellowship of his suffering. To be made conformable. Did you find out that in scriptures, in Genesis, the Bible says in Genesis 1, 27, 28, he said, and God created man in his own image. And you know, he stopped there. He said nothing to man. Apart from saying, have dominion and the rest of them. The Bible says in chapter 3, and God formed man and then what did he do he picked that man put him in a garden he has planted and said take care of it it means responsibilities are released to us based on maturity no matter how much you like your five years old child you will not discuss business plans with him that's why some of you are wondering did the pastor lie he said we lay hands on sick and on the sick and they will recover i laid hands and they recovered he didn't lie you have chosen not to grow up stop being a baby prayed one prayer for one day and you trusted God so much that as I pray this prayer this grade will change from B to A and it changed from B to C and, you, and, and that's what made you change your mind about God by forgetting all the things he had done I said I will stop going to church once in a black moon <laughs> is that not the decisions we make you are a baby Galatians 4 verse 1 he said though a child be an heir means that child is the one that has the inheritance he said he's not better than what a servant though he be lord of all he is kept under tutors and governors till the time appointed what you are looking for God is the one that determines the timing and the way you control that determination is by what you do with your time they are kept on the tutors Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 17 he said woe unto a city whose child is a king it is such a city whose child is a king Lamentations is it 5 14 or so he said the elders have ceased from the gates only elders mount gates spiritual gates only others grow up in God grow up Matthew 25 he said, and the man wanted to journey to a far country and called unto himself three of his servants and he gave them gifts according to their several abilities, not zeal. According to the capacity they can manage. Develop yourself. Grow in God. Grow. Stop being a child. Act 20-32. Is an of the word of God which is able to build you and then give you out an inheritance. It means you are first built before you are given. Do you understand that? He builds you first before he gives you things. That's how God works. Responsibilities are simply response to your abilities. 
He checks what are there, what you can undo, and he plays something on you. Some of you have chosen not to. How will at your age, this is 10 years in God, you are still dodging function in church? At your age. They say, come for vigil. You came with your Bible and with rapper. They say, why? You say, so in case I sleep. I'm speaking from a pain because of the kind of things I see on their friend. But if we keep allowing these young people go this way, they won't last. The, the life outside there is more tougher than you think. You think your lecturer is wicked? Get out of this place. You will see beasts. The Bible says, I sent you as what? Sheep among what? Wolves. He says, so be as harmless as a dove and as wise as a serpent. That's the kind of place I'm sending you to. Yeah, your boss can come to the working place and say, man, don't believe this church thing. Even your dickness is, and dickin is doing it. Change this figure. He said, Organa, 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 Organa. And you alter the figure. And then you went to church and said, So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name. Or you have altered the figure. Men every day have been defeated by life, defeated by this system. If, if we teach this and the people get aligned, we won't be disturbing ourselves and threatening people with hellfire. Because we know by they doing the right thing. See, when they drive you from school fees, where do you go back to? You go home. Are you scared of going home? That's where you came from. The only problem is you are just careful. Your father should not look at you and say you, are ch you have changed. I cannot permit you here. That's where I came from. Why should heaven be a, a threat? You want to scare me with hellfire? Why? My only problem is to live a life that when my father sees me, he will be happy and pleased with me. That's it. That's my concentration. Grow up. How do you grow spiritually? Give yourself to the dictates of the world. Make God's word a standard for your life. Make God's word a standard for your life. That's the simple principle to growth. Make what God's word says, make up your mind, I will do it. You don't adjust it, you don't correct it, you don't analyze. Follow. Instructions are given to us to obey, not to analyze. Follow it. Like I used to always tell my children, for those of us that are very conversant with our, our doctrine, that we read the book of Proverbs every day. And you read a place that tells you, say the fool, we see, we see trouble. And put his head. But the wise man will sit and what? And hide himself away. And I tell some of my children, some of you just be reading and pass. Then tomorrow now, you went and fight with Kekena Pep, man, for 20 years. He has taught your brand now. And you are shouting, Papa, what should I do? I should give my clothes. When I asked you, he says 20 naira. But you read it in the Bible where say, a wise man will see. Not every battle has reward. Not every battle. And it's there. In the Bible, it's there. Make God's word a standard for your life. That's how we grow. Do whatever He tells you to do. I've told you, you can choose your God, but you don't choose the way you live your life. Even if it's the devil you chose as your God, He still tells you His do's and don'ts. Don't tell him the devil today. Uh, you know, God is more lenient, that's the problem. I tell you, we enjoy grace over those. You see, the devil gives some people mission and they don't accomplish it. He kills them straight. Drop. I said, number one, you give yourself to the word. Number two, you give yourself to prayer. Number three, you give yourself to responsibilities. To what? Responsibilities. That's how you develop spiritual muscle. That's how what is buried in your inside come alive. You will not know the things you can do till you try. So you are giving a platform. Suddenly, people begin to wonder, wow, you mean the grace of God is this mind to upon this brother's life? For every responsibility you are running. And I've told you, stop all those demonic things you people say. I am colleague, I am melancholic, and whatever colleague. It is totally anti-scriptures. What did I say again? It is totally anti-scriptures. It is not in consonance with God's word. So if you tell me somebody that's melancholic, 
is a lovely person and then the one in choleric is always stubborn he's not loving so where is the place of the truth of spirit i say it is love how do you connect that now and he said ah, papa i've checked my life oh eh, i know where i am he looks correct they study people like you now that's why they arranged it in categories they study and if you can believe that why are you struggling to believe witchcraft why why should you struggle to believe zodiac so of you on your body now you go and put september bond you now right on and deceive you lovely <laughs> witchful <laughs> and you put it under that's where you are getting revelations from change paul said when i was a child first corinthians 13 i talk like a child i think like a child and understood like a child he said but when i grow up i threw away childish things why i know i can't mount up in god like that throw away childish things anything that doesn't grow dies so before god will give you anything to do he will first make sure you are what you are formed so it means you determine your levels in god part time is that not so you determine what god can do with your life part time by the vantage point of what you are doing with your life now he gave give them according to your several what abilities so the more i build capacity the more i open myself to receive what more from god. so why should i envy that brother they called you to take us you run opening prayer you run church you run now you are the one gossiping all over the whole place now she used to do as if she's carrying church on her head you carry in your hand tell your neighbor drop number three are people discipling nations talk characteristics of the triumph triumphant generation is that they are a people discipling what nations matthew 28 18 to 20 at his resurrection the bible said jesus shouted lo all power and heaven and earth has been given unto me said, go ye into all the world preach ye the gospel the moment you gave your life to christ you are responsible for the salvation of the next person by you that's the reason he still kept you here some of you have roommates you have never told them about jesus you have never mentioned anything to them what kind of christian are you just put on say you have not truly known christ if you don't tell someone about him it makes you go gaga the bible says and the spirit of the lord when it comes upon you you shall become what witness the first proof of the holy ghost on a man is motion you can't keep it to yourself again something drives you crazy to tell somebody about this god discipling nations and we do that number one through the preaching of the word and more importantly number two through our lifestyle for where one man read the bible a thousand reads your life you might not be opportune every time to open the bible to people but they watch your life they read your life every day on your account so many people have stopped coming to church on your account and see if this brother and this girl can be like this and no go so some of you are not even winning souls you are taking away the souls that they have won with your lifestyle and your behavior we must get back to this assignment to this vision and this mandate that was given to us to disciple nations it's not meant for evangelism unit it's meant for each and every one of us let's not get so used to church setup thought that we have neglected this christian assignment and not given to us rise up your feet and pray this prayer lord the burden for souls plant in my spirit raise your voice and pray the burden for souls raise your voice and pray the burden for souls in jesus name we pray Amen. sit down revelations 14 13 give me that scriptures he said and i hear a voice saying to me lo when the saints die they cease from their labors however their works go with them 
we will not all be in the same place in heaven. Are we following? Some of us, they are done with our mansion. They are just doing some extra furnishing. Some of you, his block got laid and left since. Because as he laid the first block, we are serious. After two weeks, you converted, they dropped the instrument. You gave your life to Christ again, they laid the next block. He's confused. Their works go with them. So all we are doing is not a waste. Ah, it's for them, it's for them. We will not be in the same place in that heaven. Second Corinthians 5, I think, verse 11. He said, because of the terror of hell, we persuade men because of the terror of hell. How will I not want to go to a place and I want my friend to go there? How? How will I know how fearful a place is? And I'll be comfortable if my family members get there. This is what makes you go crazy and say you must know God. I must tell you about just you must know him. I say we do that through the preaching of the word and through what? Our lifestyle. If I the biggest sermon, but the word of God or the word from your mouth and your life must align. They must agree with each other. Jude, give me 23. He said, and so we snatch men out of the fire. Are you seeing the kind of lexicons the Bible keeps using? We compel men because of the terror, we persuade them. That means you cry and beg them. Just Spurgeon said, If any man will make it to hell, let it be upon our pleading, still holding his hands and say, Come. If any man will make it to hell, so I don't invite her, I invite her, I know I'm going. My business now. Huh? No, that's not the language of the kingdom. We persuade men. We beg them. Paul said, I became everything to every man. Everything to every man. To win as many as possible. Snatching them from the fire. Snatch. You know what it is to snatch someone? You pick the person with a force. That's why I like this hymn. Say, must I go on empty and Must I meet my Savior soul? Not one soul with which to greet him. Most I am handed go. How many of us know this song? Can we sing it again? Most I go and empty handed. Most I meet my Savior soul. No. Not one soul with which to greet him. Most I am At the blast of the trumpet, who will make it to heaven on your account? At the blast of the trumpet. At the blast of the trumpet. It's not an old time. I came to remind us so many things we have lost. It's not an old time religion. It's a valid religion. Necessary for our current day. That every man must get into this business of so winning. Get into it. It's a serious assignment to God. Make up your mind. That I won't pass. And allow someone... That I am confident will make her go that way without releasing a word to them, without ministering to them with my life. I want. And so I wonder how you want to achieve this when all you do in the hostel with your friend is cho cho cho. You know, that's why evangelism becomes difficult in our days because you are shy. You know your life. So they say, let's go out. You are hiding at everybody's back because of the life make up your mind I'm going to change for the better number four our people love a blaze for God and his kingdom Matthew 6 33 says seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and every other thing shall be added to you Psalm 69 verse 9 David cried there said the zeal of my father's house has consumed me how far can you go for God's kingdom? Give me Ephesians 3, 19. 18, 19. He said, when you have been able to comprehend, Ephesians 3, 18, 19. When you have been able to comprehend the length, the width, the depth, and the height of love. He said, then shall you be filled with the fullness, the pleroma of God. Then shall you be filled. Have you seen some men with some levels of uncommon grace? Check their heart for the kingdom. Check their heart. The length of his love talk about how 
how far you can go for the kingdom how far can you go how far see I can do it once it's comfortable but anything that will just inconvenience me no way <laughs> listen if the bible says we should carry our cross and die daily the only thing about the cross is death there is nothing convenient about it is there a convenient way to die there's nothing convenient about it it takes your pain because you pain it keeps you in a state of inconvenience if you truly mean this God what's the bits of your love what can it cover are there things you can do for the kingdom and so you cannot do what can it cover the width of your love the depth and the height the intensity of your love he said then can you be filled with what the fullness of God the fullness of God what are you willing to let go for God's kingdom? What can you sacrifice for God's kingdom? The Bible says, listen, let me tell you the reason why some of you are fighting in your commitment to God for any of his assignment. The Bible says, where the treasure of a man is, there his heart is. He didn't say where the heart of a man is, his treasure will follow. So, the only reason why you are not serious is because you don't have a stake. Your money has not entered church. Your time has not entered. Nothing. So even if not the thing spoil, how does it affect you? Where the treasure of a man is, his heart will naturally follow it. Give your all, your time, your resources, your talent, your gift to the kingdom. The Bible is speaking in John 3, 27. He said, no man had anything except it had been given to him from where? From above. See, they got me angry. I'm not coming to church. He got you angry. You stopped. Be love a place for the kingdom. Be all out for the kingdom. Be the front line for anything that has to do with the kingdom. And see what God will do with your life. He can use your boat to preach and not give you fish at the end. He's not a user of man. I have followed him and I'm speaking from a point of experience. This God doesn't use and waste men. Oh. If you follow him genuinely, the Bible says in this world, Mark chapter 10, they ask him, Pastor, we have left land, we have left houses, father, mother to follow you. He said, what is our reward? Jesus looked at them. He said, in this world, you will have a hundredfold. Lands, fathers, mother, whatever, he said, and in the life to come, eternal life. In this world. Whenever you see God is getting from you, is to give you something much more. Are we following? He took one son from a man in the beat to make him the father of nations. That's why. Anytime he wants to get anything from you, look at it that God is about to do something big. He wants you to grow past what you have. Have you seen any man God left poor? Abraham with all they gave they, I gave it out and they left them poor it doesn't work like that that's why I tell people I was telling some of my children I said the reason why I give is I grew up in the body of Christ to begin to study I'm a good observer to study that in churches from my childhood those that are the highest givers still the givers today when they say let us give they say meet them all meet them all they are still the big shots till date yeah they are the one losing money Trace it. Just go to, use your mind, go through your backgrounds. I know how these things work. What God is looking for is channels. Channels. That's why in the, Proverbs 11 23, he said, There is he that scattereth, yet had more. There is he that holdeth more than his meat, yet it tended to poverty. How far can you go for God's kingdom? How do you, you some of you are mindless you drop two five nera as offering and you can't use that to buy a recharge card the least at least is 100 nera card i know it's an insult so you, you are very i need to learn your confidence there are things i dread and shake at how at this level if you give even a small child when you go back home now and you will say auntie oh yo 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 and you give them to the check what their reaction it's almost useless in our day and 
that's why you came to give to God. And you are wondering why your life is the way it is. You are wondering. You one time, one of my boy, he learned a message. We talked about sewing. So he took some of his shoes. I wants to sew them out. So I came home that day and I saw them in front of my the door. And I said, please, who have all these shoes here? They said they want to sew them out. And I called them and said, come. Look, all of them have opened one door. What kind of harvest do you want to reap? What kind of harvest are you expecting like this? There is nothing you have God didn't give to you. That, see, God is not after us having things. He's after things not having us. I gave my, a young man now my watch, right? I didn't pay a dime for it. Somebody brought it. cost over tens of thousands. Somebody came and said, take. And you know me. It's not that I don't like slashy things. I've been struggling to operate that resource for a very long time. Because it's computerized. So you first mistakenly it has changed itself. So sometimes I just drop it and not even wear. You can let it go. Some of you have stock clothes in your room that you are keeping for your children. I wonder they will look like inside. Keep it. Say for my children. They should have something to wear. I am wondering how they will look like then. You know, some of you cannot wear some clothes your mother gave you. And you are keeping some now for your children. Number six. A people of power. Characteristics of the triumphant generation. They are a people of power. Men who will serve this generation with the raw power of God. Men the world could run for answers and solutions. Acts 17 and verse 6. Speaking about Paul and the rest of the apostles. They said of them, these are the men that have turned the world upside down when you step into eternity to do men feel your heat do they see the light when you step into a place that's why see for the sake of your generation do all you can to carry the power of god for the sake of your generation he said no no no, no i'm not going to mystery there's no problem as a mother your daughter run to you and say mommy i'm feeling some discomfort in my stomach you say enter a car hospital or you stretch out your hand and say, I release healing to you. What will you give your own children? So it's beyond ministry. Your son told you, Daddy, I'm reading. I can't understand. You say, I command the brain to function normal now. And heaven recognized that a man has spoken. That's what we are talking about. Because we've seen Christians going to Abalis now. Pastor himself cannot solve the problem. So they are going to have a list now. They will come to church and they will go to have a list for the case. A people of power. So how do you get the power of God? Simple. Number one, die to self. Die to reputations. Die to your ego. Luke chapter 9 verse 79. The Bible says an error began to hear about Jesus. And he was confused. Verse 7. He said, is it that this guy has come back from the dead? Why? Men that return back from the dead are known to carry strange power. Verse 9, the Bible says, and this Jesus, he desired to see him. Die to self. To ego and reputation. For some of you, that's the only thing caging you in God. Say, what if it did not happen? What if it happened? I keep saying it and I say it with all sense of humility. I've seen miracles in my life. I've seen people I pray for get healed. I've seen crazy testimonies. You saw, you heard testimonies here. Yeah. There is no service I will say to you, you know, here the next week. It's not possible. And I've seen people I pray for, they die. I cried. They died. I won't lie to you. It's not everybody I pray for, I saw results. But will I give myself an excuse? No. I keep pressing on on a daily basis. Oh God, I want to see all healed. I want to see all get their answers, get their solutions to self number two how do you carry the power of god give yourself to daily christian disciplines life of fasting life of prayer life of diligence to the world you will rob with power number six are people with a rapturable mindset are people with a rapturable mindset first corinthians 15 19 
Paul speaking to the Corinthians there. He said, if only in this life you have hope, you are of all men most miserable. There is a deceptive system on the earth to make it look like this world will not one day come to the end. They are, they've been saying it since. See, when we talk about rapture, <laughs> rapture can be different things to everybody. Die, that's your own rapture. That's your own rapture. You don't have any life here to live again. So don't let anybody deceive you. There is hell and there is heaven. There is hell. A great man was asked. He said, where do you want to go to? He said, heaven. He said, you don't want to go to hell? He said, yes. He said, why? He said, but I don't, I don't want to dwell with where fools are. Only a fool will see such a salvation and treat it for nothing. He said, I don't want to be seen among fools not even for the terror of the fire but to dwell amidst of fools live your life every day like that's the last okay, you know sometimes we come to church we get to preach 10 keys and 10 ladders now the, your key order you cannot even hold it again because the keys you have carried and it looks like that's all about life in the midst of our busy schedules and activities the trumpet can sound at any point in time and like I used to tell my friends I have warned you about God I have preached to you, I have screamed on your head I have put my knees in the place of prayer by the time I'm going you hold my leg I will kick you so when I was hustling you are living your life because some of them look at us and look like we are suffering we, there's no pleasure for us there is hell live your life with a what rapturable mindset be rapture ready per time rapture ready but time it's not just it's, don't sin commit this one it's not an issue live your life that even in your sleep if they say it is time you are willing to go and with this word you see will end soon when the wrap up of the end of age don't be carried away by these deceptive systems now does it mean we should not still get along our lives no we we'll keep doing the things we do like somebody said to me he said why are they building big churches uh, you saw the video of the ark he said it's nonsense rapture I said bros you still need a chop no no chop now nah. rapture so because of we won't live our lives again it meet us in the midst of the building we go like that we must be all about the father's business be rapture ever. don't let people push you to do things that they are looking for who to join them in See, just because I want to make my friend happy just because I want to please them there are things I found out with ease and when we went with my daughter to the bank some few days ago while we were, we were at the bank we needed to go print something so on our way going I said let's check out I, I was looking for this because of the heat of Mina this um, what do you call it is it digital fan or whatever so while we were checking them I asked what's the price of this they tell me what's the price of this so the guy keep talking it will look good it will look nice and you know me I joke a lot so I was playing I said oh, this one will it blow somebody very well then when we got to one I loved he looked at me and he said, ah, Okay, this one go good for the two of Namuna and John. I said, I said, Are you mad? Now, some of you laugh and say, Hey, no, no, nah, no, they talk like that. I said, Are you mad? Why? If I don't shout like that, tomorrow you'll see me on the pulpit. And assume because I didn't condemn such, that's who I am. I said, Please, that I laugh with you don't mean I tolerate nonsense. I can turn red in split of seconds. Don't let people push you. Because they are discussing you don't want to look i do in the discussion you to contribute say now black girls they sweet past fair girls so. now the one way told this look at the nonsense you're doing look at the nonsense because you want to impress your friends say wait let's go out to parties i will go but no drink i go go but i no go drink live your life with a rapturable mindset what if it catches you there after suffering all these years you know that's what i tell people after suffering then i just play it in two seconds impossible may it never be heard the bible says flee every appearance of what he didn't say flee evil read your bible well once it tries to look like that just run when you are doubting is he right is he wrong is wrong just run that's what the bible is saying once it appears like evil 
every moment, every day of your life. Let people know what you stand for. Let people know their boundaries. Let people know what they can you cannot permit around your sphere, around your sphere. You know, I keep telling my children, I said, as much as I play and I joke, they know my stand. You are not crazy enough to come and meet me and I say, Paposhki, Papo, are you okay? You can see fire literally de descending on you at that point in time. You can. Why? There is a boundary. There's a clock out. Your fellowship president, your fellowship officials is every sister body used to touch. Say, sister, how far now? How far? Every sister's body you have touched. Now, something's happening to you. You are looking for deliverance now. <laughs> see, if you want to make this heaven, you must be righteously strict with yourself. Set safety valves around your life. I told them one time, a lady called me while I was in the campus. I had, I, let me just give you one of the examples of the encounter I had. I've had diverse kinds of temptation you can look, think of. At least in this campus, almost eight are naked like this. So she called me, Papa, I am dying. I said, really, what's the problem? I said, I'm coming now. I got so loose because I don't visit ladies. It's my rule. And you don't cook for me. Because by the time I begin to chop food, I know if you talk again. Now, so you don't collect cooler, cooler, black, blue cooler, white. Now, she, you can't say anything. Cooler has closed your mouth. Because when you take cooler, it makes you cool. The fire just goes down. And by the time I, I got to the gate, I took the bike from the hostel, I got to the gate. Luckily for me, my savior, that, because I am, I was too, I'm too emotional for people. I don't like to see people in pain. So I saw a young, I said, hey, come, follow me. I'm going somewhere. We got there and they come hunting around the yellow house, something that looks like what I said. I don't know what the name might be now. Is there anything like that again? So towards the back, there's an Abuja Lodge, something like that. I only remember, I don't go there. I just remember this because of that encounter. And so while we turned towards, you turn right, we turned at the back of the yellow house to the place. I saw a lady almost stuck naked. <laughs> you are not feeling fine, you are dying. Like this. I said, it's alright, there's no problem. Father, release your healing power upon her. Amen. And I left. And she sent me a message. She said, sir, if you had come alone, there is no thing you will have done on earth. No way you will have not slept with me. Set safety valves for yourself. Don't put yourself in the midst of temptation. Don't stay around the magnet of sin. Set safety valves. Be righteously strict with yourself. Be righteously strict. Number seven. A people of purity. That's Peter 1, 15 to 16. Say, be holy. For I am what? Holy. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. What did I say? It's a command. Not a suggestion. Be holy for I am holy and that reminds me let me warn all the brothers in this ministry if I see you touching ladies anyhow may my angel appear and give you a dirty slap because some of you use church to do stupid things my, my sister and my brother or you touch it more papa and mama everybody is mama and everybody is papa especially in this environment I sent them to some of my daughters some few days ago and I did that to be very strict I said to them I said because I know the way people can respect ministers of the gospel I said if by a mistake you ever think of it or saw it that I mistakenly used my hand to touch your breast I permit you to give me a dirty slap to a line back just when you slap you say papa sorry I understand that's how strict I wanted to get to make them not to feel you can be stupid because you are claiming somebody's anointed do stupid things that sometimes if instead of you to blame the pastor you even blame the stupid person are you are you foolish be righteously strict with yourself all right are we still happy with me because you say papa change topic change topic change topic what is the topic this is what makes it good for you this is what makes it sweet now look at what the bible says in first corinthians 6 18 to 19. He said, When a man sins, right, he sins against what? His own body. 
what does it mean it means your sin affects your material world it begins to fight you suddenly you begin to see everything around your material world crumble your finances begin to have issues your health begins to have challenges it affects your material world because sin introduces you to demons it's called the way of Balaam the Bible says one time Balaam wanted to cause the children of Israel he could not so he taught them a strategy he said cause them to go after other gods and that's what he did to get them it introduces you naturally to demons it scatters your material world check it just check your life you see things are not going well if you live that kind of life issues here issues there you just one you can sometimes you can't even explain those issues they're just coming from there to there live a right life let men be able to see the sinfulness of sin and the rightness of righteousness through your life i like the way they talk spoke it about um donna j trump the quotes of martin luther king they say if they can't see the light let them feel the heat you know that's what he did they refused to change abby but they felt the pressure they felt it from him if they can't see the light let them feel the heat let them be tired of you and give up a lifestyle of purity exodus 15 11 said thou art worthy to receive our glory say for you are what glorious in holiness the more the holiness the more of the glory you see the density of purity the density of glory you are what glorious in holiness fearful in praises glorious in holiness do we want to see glory in the church let purity be restored again such that it will get how do people still comfortably in church and go home we didn't read this in the bible neither do we hear it in the days of our fathers comfortably they will still church inside church somebody can go rob you I heard a story where pastor will finish miracle service, they will rob him. He will give us phone. The Bible says, and when they saw Ananias and Sapphira dead, fear came upon the people. The church need to be feared and revered again. Fear came upon the people. Not choir members mess up, they'll come and hold mic. Why? You know, I suggested to a friend of mine. I said, maybe the best way to help the people is just as it was done. In the days of Moses, we'll begin to anoint all the mics. You understand? You know, he said, anoint all the temple instruments. We we'll anoint all the mics. So you come and you're singing. John is telling us a story. Today, today, I just finished messing up. Uh, today, you know, you will be coming out of the mic. We'll be hearing it. Maintain purity. That's what I'm saying. Maintain purity. Romans chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. It's a poem. Apostle of Jesus Christ, give me that scripture, Romans 1 1 to 4. Paul, the apostles of Jesus Christ, separated for this very purpose, appointed and spoken of by the prophet, how this Jesus will be delivered as the son of David, and what appointed by the Spirit, declared to be his son by the Spirit of holiness. By the Spirit of holiness, it's a spirit. That you can contact rise up to your feet tonight is a spirit that when people come around you they find it not to do wrong lift up your hands and god release upon my life the spirit of holiness raise your voice and pray say after me oh god oh god release upon my life release upon my, my life the spirit of holiness the spirit of holiness oh god Oh God, release upon my life. Release upon my life. The spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness. Raise up your voice and pray. She da da baras ke pende li barra da balada da. Res ke pende li ka barra da bela ke da balada da. Je da ke barra ke da ke bria la ke da ke bria la ke da ke bela ke da. Ke da bela ke dia skapa. Rebe ke do do subra da. Rebe ke rebe ke le bri 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 if you ask God to help you, he'll help you. So how do you live successfully? A life of purity, number one. Contact the spirit of what? Holiness. Number two, run away from sin. 
can't go and download naked pictures and put on your laptop and want to be normal. Some of you tempt yourself and then you start looking for help. Run away, take away from you. Things that puts you into any condition to make you uncomfortable. If it is a relationship, cut it. It, it matters. Number eight, let's round up. Are we blessed today or we are getting angry? Are we sure? Give the Lord a shout. Number eight. The eight characteristics of a triumphant generation. Like I said, if we will survive this earth, survive these times we are in, we have to look at these things we are talking about again. Else, you'll be beaten down by the system. You'll be beaten down. I was talking to somebody, that's why I brought these things. I was talking to somebody some few days ago and I was trying to explain to her. I said, you mean because of this job, you change your date of birth? I said, but what will I do? I said, this is a waste, waste of church services. It means we are just having secretaries in the church that copies notes. Secretaries. Men that said, there is, if he did not come to save us, even if it means me remaining in a state I can't eat, I choose not to bow choose not to bow. It's a terrible scenario happening everywhere now. Everywhere. You see Christians caught. See chasing them here and there. Jailing even pastors. Pastors. See, listen to me. You must be careful because there is a demonic spirit moving upon the earth. Have you not seen people that rape people and they say, I don't know me? I gave that warning some months ago. I said there is a release of a strange spirit upon the earth. Be stay fireized by time, not to, so you don't contact it. Stay fireized. Number eight. A people that do more. Matthew five forty seven. Give me that scriptures. I love the man of God. For he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost to me. I love the man of Galilee. Can we sing it one more time? I love the man of Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost to me. I love that man. For the last time, jump up to your feet. Let's do the song. Hey, I love that man. I love that man. Yeah. Oh, God. For he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost to me. I love the man of Galilee. Sit down. Matthew 5:47. And you salute your brethren only. What do ye more than what? Others. A people that do more. A people that do more. The great man of God said, I knew to be very successful. Very early in life. I must work twice as harder than any other person in this world. I must sleep lesser than them. Eat lesser than them. What do you do? More than others. What separates the extraordinary from the ordinary is the extra. What's your input to the realization of your destiny, your purpose, your career, whatever you are doing part time? This is how we know men that succeed. They are willing to go the extra mile to give it an extra touch. Proverbs 22 29 amplified. He said, show me a man skillful, diligent in his business. 
He will stand before kings and not mere men. I ask you the question again, just like he asked them. If you do things like everybody is doing, what do you do more than others? Separate source in God. We are all called by him, but separated into levels on the basis of covenants we have caught with him. What do you do more than others? What do you do? What do you do? If you do what is uncommon, you will get what is uncommon. That's why sometimes when I see young people talking about their dreams, talking about the things they want to achieve, and I see their passion, their dedication into it, I marvel. Are you sure you are serious about what you are talking about? A dream is not what you see when you sleep. It's what takes sleep off your eyes. Ask them. Even this morning, I couldn't close my eyes since yesterday. It's not what you see in sleep. <laughs> it keeps you in a perpetual state of burden till it is realized and actualized. Even when a little sense of pleasure, enjoyment is coming, say, no, master the art of delayed gratification. So you are going somewhere, continue. What do you do more than others? That's the only way you can get a sweet home when you become a different husband. That's the only way you can get a good grade when you become a different student. What do you do more than others? The moves you make determines the waves you cause. Divine releases are solely dependent on God, but our reception on them, of them is dependent on us. You think God just likes somebody else than you and decides to make the person like this? No. Go and trace it. They do things you can do. That's why I tell people. I say, watch those heavily used by God. They love God more than others do. They will go to, to do things that people will count as costly. They will do it. We are supposed to start an evening fast yesterday, right? Through the six month prayer thing. And so while we were making the morning, woke up in the morning. One of my daughter said to me, "Say, Papa, what are you going to eat?" I laughed. I said, first of month, did they chop?" He said, but the first thing they say is evening fast now. I said, that one is general church. This is a commitment monthly. I still need to do it and do the other one too. What do you do more than others? How far are you willing to go for the realization of that mission, that vision God has given to you? Don't play around your destiny. Don't play around. Wake up and get serious with life. Wake up. If you do today's what, what other will not do, you will get tomorrow what they will not get. Wake up. I remember the early days of the ministry. I fasted my life out. Sometimes I'm on 40. I'll finish two weeks. I rest 60. Stretch, no food. A young man sent a message to somebody that know me. He said, if you see Papa now, you will pity him. He looks like someone that has HIV. I was saying this to some of my children some few days ago. And so the last time I traveled, I went to Joss. And so that my, of my, that my daughter was there, she ran to me and she was touching me. Papa, hey, is you because of what she has heard? But what do you do? What an others. So I said, make up your mind to do this differently. Make up your mind to be a different student. When others are sleeping, I will still stay awake. When they say this is how far I can go in my study, I'll go there. A different husband. See, if others are beating their wife, I refuse to. I was encouraging some, some people that came for some issues. And I was telling them, I said, see, one thing I wanted marital wise is peace of mind. So I make up my mind in any issue I am wrong. Because I, I've traced Bible. I swear, you can't win a woman. No. You know, at least I've read the Bible to an extent, maybe more than all of you. It's over 60 or 70 times now, back to back. Everywhere you see a woman and a man quarry, check who got sided. I'll give you two examples, then we end. In Genesis, Adam came and said, It is the woman you gave me that made me eat food. God left her. He said, Adam, just face me. Let me answer your mother. One time, Abraham was being patient with God in the fulfillment of a promise. It was Sarah that brought suggestion and said, go and sleep with her. When she carried Bele, Sarah said, Abraham, 
drive away. He said, ha, ah, I did my own. Now you bring her come. He's, God appeared to say, Abraham, listen to her. So I have, you know, that's why I said, when I see a man that feels he understand the scripture and beat his wife, he didn't get it. There's a way you, if you understand this Bible very well, just make up very early not to look for God's trouble. So I told myself, sometimes my wife used to trust me. If I want to get angry about something, I say, say, don't let me hinder your prayers. <laughs> so I beg, I say, please, that's my only strength. <laughs> let my prayers be answered. <laughs> so, different husband. The Bible says, if Jesus decides to fight for his right, are we going to be saved? What is the right to die? Sometimes lose your right for the sake of a better reward. So I make up in my mind for peace of mind's sake, you are always correct. Case has ended. Trust any, any, any issue. One person has chosen not to agree to be wrong. That's the reason for any quarrel. And you are now meeting pastor. I don't know if demon is fighting at home. There's a simple solution. It's not a demon. Number nine. Is it nine? Huh? Yes. Number nine. A people of massive kingdom resources. Yes, you come to church. We prophesy miracle money. We prophesy the wisdom and the favor of God. It doesn't make you useless. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 8, 18. It says, for you will remember, I am the one that gives you the power to make wealth. What he gives you is power. Employ the power to work. It is to work. Get your hand. He said, we bless the works of what? Your hands. Get it to do something. A people of massive kingdom resources. You know the reason why we need massive money? Our mandate is national. He said, disciple nations. So you need nations type of money. I, have you gone to a bookshop? You say, it's Bible, I want to buy. They say, two, five. You say, no, I mean it's Bible. They say, oh, it's the word of God. Take. He, they told you like that. You paid, right? Everything you see happen in church. Money is, 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 is be spent for it. Everything. So you can't even advance your vision. I told you no man can go above with available resources. You can't. How I many of you have seen ideas you have yet? Is the money that's the problem. You are idea fool. You choke. Some of you might say young, but you choke. You are idea fool. But the problem is money. You know it for yourself. It's money. It's not there. And that's what I'm trusting God in this season to release to us. Massive kingdom resources. Massive. Massive. So how do we how do we engage kingdom wealth? Number one. Obey spiritual laws. Obey spiritual laws. Shall I show you scriptures? Holy Spirit, help me. Second Corinthians. All right. Verse seven. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. Now as you excel in everything, in faith and speech, in knowledge and diligence, and in your love for us, excel also in this grace. Are we following? Some of you are ta 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 But you can never give. I don't read from verse 1. It talks about the giving, giving, giving. That's what it's talking about. How the Macedonian church gave it. They even gave themselves. And he recognized that they did that out of their poverty. He said, they give. If they could join their life on top, they would have done so. He said, as you grow in all those type of grace, you could move mountains. He said, make sure you grow in this type of grace. For it is scriptural that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Scriptural. That's why I taught you a principle. I said, check your churches. Those who have been giving 50 years ago, they are still the big shots to date. And those dodging have still been dodgers to date. Check them. So grow in what? Spiritual law. Engage spiritual laws. Don't break them. Don't see, forget all these gimmicks here and there. You know, <laughs> I don't want to get into the issue of tight. We'll preach that some other time. I don't like to ever see um, someone's in a full blown semester. Maybe the next semester after we just finished trust and skirt. So we enter that one, maybe second semester. Then get clarity from the word of God. Is that okay? Because the truth is that there's nothing like tight. 
I'm going to tell you what it is. Do we take tight here? We do. So relax. Is that okay by you? Next semester, I'll treat that. But grow in the grace of giving. Grow in the grace. So that's the first thing. Engage spiritual laws. Number two, get your hands to do something. No matter how much olive oil I give you to drink, if you don't put your hand to work, the money will not come. Get your hands to work. Your friends are sharing business idea with you. You said, no, Shida Kaflunde Elite, you won't tell them. You will drink oil. Continue. You will drink oil. And funny, it's oil that can never heal the sick. You will drink. Get your hands to work. The Bible says, look at The Bible says, I will release what? The blessings. Let me show you scriptures. Hebrew chapter 1, I think verse 3. He said, Jesus is the express image of his person. It means if I look at Jesus in the physical, I know how God is. So it means to to embrace or appreciate or capture spiritual things, you must create a physical image for them to rest. So how do we know that a blessing is sitting? When I see that thing you are doing changing. When I see it prospering. But didn't do anything. And every service in, out, in, and we are prophesying. May God change your story. May God bless you. On top of what? It's like a man going to a farmland without planting nothing. And he's just pouring water and fertilizer. He will grow in Jesus' name. See, that you are spiritual does not make you lose your brain. He gave you. You grow in Jesus' name. Because some of you just think everything. You just have to pull Bible inside. When you want to go to the toilet, say, hmm, shoom, I feel in my spirit now. I have to go. Is that what you do? Then when you go there, you open the door. With support, support. Your brain tells you that something is upstairs. I want to come out. Put your hands to work. Get into a business. Get into an investment. Learn a skill. So when you come, our job is to release the blessings upon it. That's what gives you an advantage. That what people will do ordinarily, you are doing it with a supernatural force resting upon it. Number 10, and that's my last for the, today. A people that is born of God. A people that is born of God. 1 John 5, 4 to 5. Say, whatever is born of God overcometh what? The world. Even our faith. So what overcomes the world is anything born of God. First John 4, 4. Say, you have overcome the evil one. Because you have him in you. First John 2, 13 to 14. John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says, a, a renowned scholar of the Jews came to Jesus at night called Nicodemus, Professor Nico. He came to Say, we know that no man can do these things if God is not with him. And just said, You are right, but the way to get these things is be born again. You can't have this kind of life we are talking about if you are not part of God's family. You can't have it. Say, if to do this kind of things I do he must be born of the water and of the spirit is it verse 6 he said what is born of flesh is flesh and what is born of spirit is spirit you must become a part of God's family you want to make up that decision this afternoon and say I've heard your word father I know, Lord, I am far from you. Or you've looked at your life and it seems like I addressed issues about your life. Wherever you are, talk to God right now. Tell him, Son of David, help me. Talk to him. Come and me. Your home. Come and be everything I and all I know. Oh, for you. to 
come true to my heart will be a place where you wanna be come on me my heart your home very quickly we'll pray 10 prayers number one What's the first characteristic of the Shafan generation? They are a people of prayer. Not give me stamina in the place of prayer. The grace and the spirit of supplication. Let it rest upon my life. Raise up your voice and pray tonight. in Jesus name we will pray Amen. lift up your hands oh God oh God release upon my life release upon my life Great Spiritual enlargement. Grace for spiritual enlargement. Release upon my life. Release upon my life. Grace for spiritual enlargement. Grace, grace for, for spiritual, spiritual enlargement. enlargement. Listen, it's a grace. It's a grace. I remember when I was about to grow in the way of prayers. Pray for 30 minutes. The first time I ever tried 30 minutes. I invented what we call sleeping in his presence. I set the alarm to ring after 30 minutes. And I found out I've prayed very long. And the alarm refused to ring. So I just lie down. Since we are still in the cloud. Just be like that. Daughter in Jesus name. Thank you father. That's how it came up. There is a grace. That makes a man. Spiritual enlargement. Spiritual enlargement. The first three days dry fast I ever did in my life. I didn't complete it is here. Maybe she will be hearing this for the very first time. Over, over again. It looks like my life was going. And I told you the rule. Don't die. When you know life is about to leave you, look for anything your hands can lay. And come back to life. And still continue. <laughs> I don't like hearing, hearing stories like people fasted and died. Why? <laughs> This glory, leave it to like that, oh. And now they now put cloud in your, your paper and cross. <laughs> and then I like, call to glory. So you continue there. So I was knowing that I was going home. And so I came back. I went to the home. My mom was doing kunu then. So I just, you know when you are not the one moving, but Christ moving through you. That's the level I was there. So I waited for, I'm telling you my experience. So if you are in that condition, you know you are, it's not strange. Are we together? So immediately she took a corner. I just sipped to ask. Actually, I didn't break my fast. At that level, it was liquid fast. <laughs> I was rounding up with a liquid. So I took the kunu raw, without sugar. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 27, 7. It says to the hungry man, every bitter thing is sweet. So I drank and life came back. I broke later in the evening. That's my first experience. Because of you seen as ah, it's just fast anyhow. No, is that many people don't tell you the truth. That's the problem. That's how it was for me, sincerely. And so many other experiences. If I it made me to discover so many things, then while in Zaria I can fast three days, seven days stretch, because I grew up without water. When I came to Mina, day one. Be, me and my spirit will be fighting. Come back. Come back. Because the thing will almost be going. Day one. So I knew that environment differs. Because naturally, yeah, without fasting, you take a drum of water. Let alone when you are now fasting. So I had to start taking water. And sometimes if I wish to, I take liquid. Alright? So I'll tell you the truth. This is how it works. So one time I was traveling with a man of God. And um, in the car, he took Martina while we were going for the ministration. I mean, I'm a very inquisitive person. I don't used to lie, lie, and I don't like hiding my things. I ask you the question straight. 
So when we got to the church, he knows me very well. That I will ask a question. So he told them he said, I've been on a 70 day stretch fast. Ha! I just eyeing from the proof. <laughs> so Abba. <laughs> I, saw, I saw you now. You took Martina. <laughs> so I know he knew that the way I left him. He said, I know my son will be, let me say, because he's here. Actually, I what? <laughs> so it is the liquid fast. I said, ah. But the way people just sit on the pulpit like this, people will not know. One time a man told me, when the church praying, so it was one of my papa then, he said he was in a fast. I think it was this 60 days, I was 70 days. <laughs> and he's looking very agile. So when we came to church very early in the afternoon before prayer time, I saw him eating food. So I was confused. What kind of 70 day stretch is this? So he knew he had to correct the mistake. So when he come out, came out of the pulpit, he said, I'm still in the season of waiting, but I'm on an evening fast. <laughs> I said, thank God you corrected it too. You know, evening fast, it means from six, that's what we are doing as a ministry for the next six months, right? From six, you don't eat again to six a.m. the next morning. Because sometimes you just hear some things on the puberty, they tell you. I told one of my son, he said, then I will be growing up in God, I will hear people say things like, five books in a week. <laughs> it can be terrifying. I said, no, I will find out. So I began to research and research. And I found out that what they do is to play a book. Or this app that will read it. I said, I read 50 books in a week. <laughs> Especially if you are not yet busy like them. I read 50 books. It's not to sleep and it's reading itself. You hear it in your spirit. Even the disciples of Jesus, it's not everything Jesus told them that they understand. It was after his death then, over time, they begin to understand some. That's how some sermons are. You know yet. It's later on you begin to hear it more small. Is that okay? Lift up your hands and pray. Lord, grace for spiritual enlargement. Release upon my life. Raise your voice and pray. In Jesus name we pray. We pray this to prayer one. Lord give me a heart for souls and a heart for your kingdom. Raise your voice and pray. Implanting me a burden for souls and a burden for your kingdom. in Jesus name we in two minutes what kind of life do you want to live what is it you want God to do it raise your voice and pray what is it you want God to do with your life what is it you want God to do with your life Apollon this carriage is the line to Kavash. She dug a black decoros, gale paradas, kine cofella di carabida. No bobo bosch, kite land of rick de calados, go be a cotreminda habis. Rabba baba la da brake koton do vlek de gare de skidi yoko krada da da yas Ripa parada skida brando breke do la ko shata de igidish Rabba baba baba ya di diya rodo do 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 yoko vrede de ke de ke dish Rabba baba 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 ya da vrada da da ya ga vrada da da ya ga vrada da da ga la ga dish
In Jesus' name we pray. The time is fast spent and I want us to close now. Lift up your hands, we sing a song three times and I will speak and proclaim God's word and prophecies over us. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. Like I ask, what are you looking for? What do you want from him? We wait on you. We wait on you. upon you media holy ghost raise the people for yourself holy ghost catch the symbol holy ghost give someone a message that we win nations at the visit give someone a prophet that we come back the hearts of nations give someone right now an anointing that we transform and disciple nations holy ghost holy ghost holy ghost
There's a fire inside me that is capable to burn the world. If I fast and pray, I will fast and pray. For there's a fire inside me that is capable to burn the blue. I chant them open. I chant them open. Hey! Ready to drink a bowl of fire. I chant them open. I chant them open. Help them, ushers, help them now. One, two, three. Clash the sim Clash the simmers. Holy Ghost. Let your wind blow. Let your wind blow. Put an anointing on the life of that young man. Put an anointing on the life of that young woman. Holy Ghost. We are ready. To drink the bowl of fire, holy wine, very oh. We are hungry to drink a bowl of fire, holy wine, boiling wine. Oh. We are hungry. To drink a bowl of fire, I chant them open. I chant them open. Hungry to drink a bowl of fire. Oh, 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 oh. We are hungry to drink a bowl of fire. My hands and feet are boiling with fire. I see in the spirit realm vice of oil, boiling oil, being poured upon 15 people. And God said, I will give them the voice of this generation. At a class of the symbols, no, wherever they are. One Holy Ghost, let the oil drop upon them now. Young Asians, Holy Ghost, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, wait, wait, I just see right now, in the mouth of a young man, a trumpet was being placed, to play a sound, and a peculiar message for a generation, Pick that man now. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Let the trumpet blast. Let it blast. Help them. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The spirit now I'm seeing the angels anointing certain hands and I see a new dimension of power help them help them one two help them the house to burn now clap us. Angels of miracles, angels of healings, angels of miracles. On your people now, 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 Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. The 
There is a cherry beam in the midst of you now. Holy Ghost, class the symbols. Cherry beams of God. Sheta Gadigidish. At the count of three, choir, lift up your hands. A wind will blow. A wind will blow. One, two, three. Holy God! Let your wind blow upon them now. Holy Ghost! There are three people I need to pray for. I hear God say to me, they carry an apostolic. Everywhere silence. Three of them. Father, pick them for me now. Three of them. An apostolic mandate. Let the depth in me call out the deep in you right now. In the name of Jesus. Help him. Help, him. Help them. Where's the second person? Holy Ghost. Three of them. Aha. Aha. Now, clash the symbols. Holy Ghost. Everywhere. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! She a la comandeli Zoda da 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 she yi gabro di da lo te ya da 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 de ya Ramana ngro di gidi 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 Se le du di ya de Ija ya 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 Ija ya ya now lift up your hands everyone say this after me oh god put your anointing upon my life that will touch my generation put your anointing upon my life that will impact my god put your anointing upon my life that will cause my generation to hear my voice. I need it now. I need it now. I need it now. I need it now. Bring the Holy Ghost. Cast the symbols everywhere. Let the oil drop now, 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 now. Holy Ghost. From this meeting, let giants in God rise. Young Asians, generals of faith, business tycoons, and so giants. Hey, Adakadi Golo de Skobay. Adade Lagada Sode Gedigidish. Iba Vale Gedigidus. Le Bada Da Bude Gedigidigidish. Rada Soda Le. Aya Sadadash, Pere de Go, Sati la Gaza, Eva Sate Galas, Fire of the Holy Ghost, Shelege Bente Brida Cosa, Edadadi Shegede, Shatas Kabadash, Lebegede Sopra Digidish. Holy Ghost! Holy Father, we worship you. Precious Jesus, our Savior, Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit Lift up your hands everywhere 
Father, I have done my part. I've preached your words to your people. It is left for you to do in their life it's your intention. And so I make summons upon the spirits of the prophet. I make summons upon the oil from the wells of the cherubims. I make summons upon ancient mantles of old. I make summons upon spiritual realities. I make of the spirit. I ask my father that you place upon your people tonight. Let it drop upon them. Let it drop upon them. Are you raised from this meeting men that will change the world? Men that will impact their generation. Men that will live like you on this earth. Shidaka bobelas kati ligidish. Baradash kada yagadash. I'm seeing in a vision now, like a ball of fire they are putting in inside someone's mouth. Your word today carries a new dimension of grace, like a ball of fire inside the mouth. Like a ball of fire. Holy Ghost! Thank you. Thank you. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice in this meeting today. Whatever does not reflect God in your life, every demonic addiction, every character trait that doesn't portray the kingdom of God, it is run down by fire. We stand on today to decree by the vantage point of the celebration of this season. What is it in your life that is anti-God? What it is in life that doesn't reflect who he is, be roasted now by fire. Be roasted now by fire. Be roasted now by fire. In the name of Jesus. May God envelop you in his glory. May God beautify and color your life with his glory. May God use you for his glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace that keeps a man from falling. Establish a man in God. The Bible speaking in Jude 1.24. Said, and there is an ability that is able to keep us from falling and to present us blameless. May that ability rest upon you now. May that ability rest upon you now. May that ability rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I give you two minutes. That's what I hear God say to me. I don't want to pray because I'm actually under pressure because of time. Normally I start conference at two days and stretch nine hours. We we'll had to push the time for because of the exams. Whatever you desire. If I pray, he hears me. I want you to talk to God about it and I want to speak over those requests. Whatever it is you want to see. If God can change somebody's grade even before the result. Just imagine that. You know, there's a way testimony can become so common in this place that it doesn't look big. Because it happens all the time. All the time. See so the way the young man was lying down? I'm just hearing the testimony for the first time. He's telling the man, check, sir, check. And the thing has disappeared. And you say, this God is not real? No, we've not followed after calling the device fables of the word of God we have seen. Our eyes have touched, we have preached. Our hands have undoed even this word of life. Whatever it is, please say it to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your hands. Lord, that the whole world may know that there is a God that sits in heaven. And the whole world may know that your hands is upon my life, that you called me, I didn't call myself. I pray for every request, every desire your people have poured out to you. Father, Lord, give each and every one of them a testimony. Yeah. I turn those desires to a testimony now. Yeah. Even for those following online, hearing the sound of my voice across the globe. Whatever it is they asked of you, I call it done. I call it done. I declare and I declare within the next seven days, let there be testimony. Let there be an outbreak of testimonies. An outbreak of miracles. 
an outbreak of favors, an outbreak of healings, an outbreak of signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. Some of you God is saying to me, by the vantage point of the meeting tonight, starting from today, is seven days of strange encounters. Watch your dreams. Watch your dreams for the next seven days. Seven days of strange encounters. And God will be able to speak to you things that regards your assignment, regards your purpose, regards your calling, regards your life, your destiny, your family. He will begin to show them to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. My desire every week is that each person have a testimony. That's my desire. That nobody come to God's their time that there be tangible proofs that the divine encounter them i pray for you as you leave this meeting tonight what will give you joy what will cause you to testify what will make you happy you know sometimes the bible says you ask of anything john 16 23 he said i will do it for you so that your joy may be full sometimes instead of us to derive our joy from answered prayers we can derive our joy from the prayers I'll explain two, two weeks more. I pray for you. May God give you answers. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. I will end the meeting right now. If you have something specific that is a, a reproach and a burden. You come to the altar after the meeting is closed, talk to God about it and see if there is not a God that hears the cries of his children. Tell him this thing. Let this reproach cease. Let this shame end. It's a conference. Don't waste your time. Don't come to mark that you came. Are we together? Live with something tangible. I pray for you. All that have been spoken over your life will come to fruition.